Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove and thanks for joining me today. I uh, thought I would come on and show you guys some fun doodles I've been doing on these labels uh, before I had showed you how to do um, some chives and different kinds of herbs and things like that on these big sheets of labels uh, so they're ready to use which I just I love that idea that they're just pull off and ready to go and I love creating a whack load of them and storing them in a little folder and then they're ready to go when I need them so here's some done uh, again some herbs done but using a different ink background and then I moved on to some bigger labels that I had in my stash and these ones are what we're going to work on today let's see if I can find the the container they came in. I uh, don't know if I still have it. I think these might be my last two. But they were like, oh, no, here they are. There's one left. This is my uh, studio stickers. They're a four inch by two inch. And I think I got them either at the thrift shop or maybe at the, um, the oh, here it is, Dollarama. So there you go, a whack load of stickers. There's 75 in there. So for whatever, about 25 or whatever it is these days. Uh, so I decided to do some doodles. So we did some birdies. So I thought we could do some birdies today. I did some thistles, I did some mushrooms and uh, some random little plants. And again, they're just really handy to use. And then I thought maybe if we have time, I'd like to show you how I made this little folder and uh, maybe some ephemera to go with it, with our stickers that we're drawing. So let's get started and so you're gonna need uh, stickers obviously if you have them again the idea behind this is just something ready to use ready to use ephemera and I just sit and doodle so I drew all these size ones all at the same time just for fun so let's get these ones out the way for now oh and you can also stamp these so maybe we'll do a stamp as well uh, what should we do? Should we do birds or should we do thistles or mushrooms? I don't know what to draw. Let's do birds. I'll start. I said birds. We'll do birds. <laughs> my multiple personalities. Okay, so we're going to ink these up. I'm going to use my trusty uh, four pad uh, mixed ink pad. Um, I think it's from Jim Holtz, I guess. Yeah, and I love this stuff. It's just handy to have all these different colors in one spot. And I'm just going to dirty up the labels and I'll try and remember to link that other one below on the herbs and I'll probably be doing a couple of these because I'm really into doing the labels right now and I want to build up a collection ready to go with different themes so if you have any theme ideas you want to see let me know I'm more than happy to do it um, I love hearing from you guys and what you guys think and what, what we should do. So if there's anything you want to learn or anything you want to share, please do. Okay, so let's do some birdies. I'm just going to use these guys as a reference. So they're in front of me. And hopefully I'm in camera view here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So again, use any, any size labels that you might have. And I'm going to use my usual quickie sketch approach where I'm just going to build up the shape. So I'm going to start with the beak. And the beak will probably adjust as we draw. And then I'm gonna give him a forehead. And then I'm gonna give him a back. And it's okay if his body goes off the page, not a big deal. Again, it's just a sketch to introduce into your journal. So nice and casual. And give him a belly and a chest. And again, this will probably adjust as we build him up. So I like to pull back the line where I think the beak would go and just drop the eye a little bit lower. So if I were to draw that, it would go through the upper edge of his eye, his beak. And I'm just gonna fill in a little pocket of dark feathers. And I'm gonna fill in his eye with the black and a touch of just a tiny bit of white showing through the outer edge of his eye. Just so we can see it through all this black feathers and I'm just gonna kind of scrabble them in keep playing till I get a look I like get the shape I want and I'm gonna give him his black pocket of feathers down here 
And then just a light indication of feathers by rubbing my pen across. And you'll see I'm going in the direction that I think the feathers would grow. That's important. And then a wing, indicate a wing here. And then his tail. I'm just, again, just scribbling. So he's, he's kind of chunky. I'm gonna thin him down a little bit. So I think I'll make his head just a little bit bigger because his, his belly's so big. So birds can take practice. Um, I practice a lot. And then some of you will enjoy drawing like certain birds more than other birds. Um, but it's all, it's all just about having fun and just doodling away. So you can see I'm not putting a lot of effort into the details because I'm not after the details. I'm just after the form. I just want to capture this birdie. And you could do this in pencil, of course. You don't have to do it in pen. I'm just gonna darken up under here. Darken up his tail. I'm gonna give him some legs. So even though this is a mistake here, I'm gonna leave it. It's just part of the sketch. Feeling out the form of the sketch can, can add some real interest to the sketch as well. I'm just gonna rub, just kind of scribble these little claws. I'm not, again, I'm not putting a lot of detail into that. And then I'm just gonna give him a stick that he's standing on. So it's nice and loose, nice and easy. Um, and don't be discouraged if you don't catch the form in the very first go, just scribble them out again. All right, so there's that one. Let's do one more. So we'll do more of a, so I guess he's a little bit of a, like a, what are they called? Finch? Chickadee, more of a chickadee. So let's do more of a finchy looking bird. And I'm no, I'm no bird connoisseur by any means, but I know that finches have these more kind of parrot-like beaks. So let's give that, let's do that. And so I'm gonna give him a sharper beak so you can see it's much wider than the little, little finch beak. This one's wider. I really need to learn my birds. And I give him an eye. So this one, if I were to draw the beak across, his eye would be above it. So when I look at a bird reference, I always try to imagine the beak continuing, and that kind of tells me where his eye will sit. It helps me a lot gauge the proportion to the bird's head, which is important, because you don't want his eye way back here or way up here. And so that, again, just takes a little bit of practice, but you can visually look for references like that. So figure out where his where you've drawn his beak, and then you can guide where his eye will go based on where you've drawn the beak. So I'm gonna give him a black eyeball. And I'm just gonna leave an indication of the white around. So I don't know if you can see that, just a little indication of the white. Same on this one, just to separate the black from the eye so that you can, you can see it a little better. You can distinguish where his eye is because you wanna see his eye. Okay, so his head's gonna go down, and then he's got very strong, stocky wings, so they'll jet out a little bit. And then he's got his tail. And then we'll go up into his belly, and he's got a little bit more of a pronounced chest. Okay, so now we'll make this beak a little softer. And I'm just gonna now color in maybe a little bit of pattern to his feathers. Give him more of a finch look. So chickadee finch, right? I think I got it right, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it doesn't matter. It's just about playing and scribbling birds. And if you're doing, if you're seriously into birds, then obviously it would matter. But if you're just adding some wildlife into your journals, then just have fun with it. It could be a cartoon bird. It can be, you know, a, an outline of a bird. 
It doesn't have to have detail. It's your journal, so you do, you do what you want in your journal. I'm just gonna scribble this in. And you can slow the video down, of course, and do what you need to do to draw along with me. And I hope you do draw along with me. I've had a lot of really nice comments lately, especially on this last herb video I did about people wanting to give it a try and, you know, inspiring them to start drawing again. And I swear that is the best compliment when somebody's picked up a pen or a pencil and decided to give it a try. And if you feel like it, you're more than welcome to tag me in an Instagram post. If you uh, post your pictures on your Instagram, just tag me in because I would love to see them. That would be awesome to see. All right, and let's give him some stockier legs. He's got these kind of meaty legs here. So this is the one on the other side of his body. So we only see a little bit of it. And then he's got his main one, front one here. got some pretty meaty claws on him grabbing things okay there we go I always like to sign my drawings just to show that they are hand drawn so we'll use these two we'll start with these two two little different birds and I think I think they show that they're different species. They might not be perfectly accurate, but I think you can see that they're two different kind of birds. So let's do some fun um, ephemera with them. So we've drawn them out, took what? A minute and a half, two minutes. So let's do, let's make some tags and things because that's, that's the fun part. So I have this old book that I found from the thrift shop and it's got this really cool backing on it. I'm just going to zoom you out a little bit because the camera's a bit in my way. Hopefully that's good. And it's an old music book. And, uh, and I just love the inside of the, the brown papers. So I'm going to use this. What else have I got? Mm -hmm. Let's make a tag with this for starters. So the way I like to work is I just basically take a, a sticker and I'm going to stick it down. So maybe I'll stick it down, maybe I'll stick down this end, just so I can cut the, the tag a little nicer. Okay, so see, ready to use. That's what I love about these, uh, these labels is just ready to use ephemera. And you can make a big collection of it, you know, right as you're going. The scissors are upside down and just do a bunch of doodles in a theme that you're working on or whatever mood hits you, a theme that you might work on later. I'm gonna round these corners, make this just a little journal card. I didn't really prepare with my materials, so I don't know what I've got out here. I was excited to just show you the drawing. <laughs> there we go. What tools do I have? Let's see. I did have this guy. So here's a, or one of those fancy cutters that does a nice flat, which I like because then the, the ribbon or the lace can lay flat and it, you don't have to tie it. You just kind of feed it through. So it keeps the bulk down in your journal. So. You can staple this, but I don't have a stapler, so I'm just gonna glue it. Come on, glue, do, do, do. Yeah. So I hope you've all been having fun making your own journals and being creative. So there we go, a little tag, a little birdie tag. And you can put something on the back here if you wanted. You can put another bird on there if you want, but let's do something like this maybe. I'll just glue this down. Just so you have somewhere to journal. Just nice and quick. Straighten this one out a little bit. <laughs> I don't cut well. I don't cut straight. All right. So I have an 
nice little journal card with one of our birds on. And again, anything you choose to use on these labels. I don't know if there's any glue coming out. There we go, it's pretty dark in here today. So I have my light on, I hope it's not casting too much of a shadow and it's cold and I've got my sweater on. I thought, I was really hoping the sweater days were behind us, but it was wishful thinking I think on my part, too early. Too early here in Ontario. All right, so there's our little birdie. And what I wanted to show you was this really cute fold. And I'm just gonna find a piece of paper to fold it with because it didn't think that far ahead. So we'll use one of these music sheets. They're a little bit brittle, so they might not be the best choice. This book is definitely old. I got it for $1.29. I was like, start the car. <laughs> I'm so excited to get it so cheap. Uh, where to put my scissors now? Right there. So I'm just gonna straighten this edge. And see if I remember how to do this because I've tried to show folds before and I'll forget how to do them halfway through. If anybody's watched my other videos, yeah, not the most professional. Let's see if I remember. So I folded it like this on an angle. So maybe a little bit more. Folded it like that. And I was just playing with folds. I don't know if this is original or not, but I just was playing with scraps and I was just folding away, trying different things. And then you fold her over on itself. So sorry if I confused you. So you fold it down like that. And then you take this and you wrap it around the back. So now you got your corner fold. And then I took this end and I went up and I went under like this, so I fold it, probably fold it here first, then fold it up. So this pocket has a little bit more stability with that, with this fold. And that's what I did. And then I evened off the edge. And then I glued here, but because I have my machine right here, I'm just gonna sew it really quick. Just to think I get a little bit more of an accurate closing. Sorry, off camera, but, and then we just decorate it. And I'll show you where I sewed here in a second. So I just sewed the edge right here and right here. And now I have a pocket and I have a pocket. I missed that edge. So let me just sew that again. And this is pretty thin paper, so you don't want to over sew but I thought those were really cute. And then I take my, get that out of the way, I take my corner rounder and I just corner the edge. And so if you used a little bit of a thicker paper, uh, it would be a lot more stable and um, thicker, but it's still, it's still a great little pocket. So, you know, you can still put your pocket stuff in there. So, oh yeah, and then I tape the back. I use some washi tape, but I don't know if I brought that out. Let's see. Oh, I've got some here. Some washi tape. I always forget to use this stuff, so I've been trying to incorporate it more by leaving it right in front of me. Because I don't find it the best stuff to use. It's, it's decorative, but it's not the stickiest, so I guess you can add glue to it. Someone has told me to add glue. But then, to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of having a tape. Like a tape should stick. But back here, I think it would it'd stick okay. All right, so we can decorate this. Let's put, let's maybe use this really nice old brown piece of paper. And I'm trying to use my ruler more often now because I really like that torn edge. So, put that there, put that there. Or do I want it right there? And then maybe we can put a stamp on here, like that a little bit thinner, I think. So I had a little bit of brown fabric kicking around somewhere. Here it is. This is coffee dyed. So I thought maybe we could put 
something like this on here and then stamp something on this. So where's the stamp? Do you have any stamps? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. My desk is very small, so a lot of stuff is on the floor. So here's some stamps that I have carved. Let's see what we've got. I think we did like a cute little floral one. Here's a leaf. Will that fit on there? Where's my piece of fabric on? <laughs> Eh, nah, don't like that. Don't know what else I have. So I've been carving away and having fun with this. I'm not, I'm not too thrilled with any of those. Let's let's maybe just use a little bit of a leaf here. So I'm gonna put some ink on. Oh, I should probably use the ink side. And then instead of flipping it over, I think I'll just put, did I lose the fabric again? Where did I put it? There it is. It's stuck to my pencil case. I think I'll just kind of push it down this way. See what we get, whether we like it or not. I just want some texture. So there's some kind of cute texture. And then let's maybe dirty this up a little bit. Uh, there's my ink, there we go. Yeah, so I've been having fun doing these labels. I hope you guys give it a try. Try not to be overly intimidated by sketching. It is really just having fun. So there, that's kind of different, right? Kind of a fun pattern without really saying what it is. So I'm gonna glue this down and then maybe we'll do one more label or bookmark or something with our sketch. I wanted to show you too how you just print on these labels and have a collection of printed labels ready to go. And again, great way to use up scraps, which I'm always looking for ways to do. So I have so many, like all of you, I'm sure. There. All right, so I've got this guy. Uh, we had a label left over, so let's do a print on him, maybe. Let's use this one again. And where's my ink? This is that Coca, Coca ink I use for close to my heart. It's just a really nice dark color that I like without being black. It makes a nice, real, very rich stamp. So you can do a bunch of these as well if you're not into sketching. And again, it's ready to use ephemera. So there's a stamp. Okay, so you can see, you can just make a huge collection of these ready to go with any theme. So we got a birdie one going. Oh, I wanted to do something with this. I was thinking maybe I could add something like this. I should have done it before I sewed it, but we can still add it, I think. And so I'm gonna put it in here. I'm just gonna open the pocket a little bit just to slide the lace in. Hopefully not get glue everywhere. Just wanted to embellish that angle. There. Make sure that that glue that doesn't glue together. So while that's drying, we'll work on another little, little one. Which one should we use? Should we do another bird? Uh, yeah, let's use this little individual guy here. So maybe we can use, use the music sheet paper. Stick them on. And we could, now let's cut it. Oh, let's use the ruler. I really want to get in the habit of that. Where's my ruler? Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So you can see this comes together, the sketches come together nice and quick, nice and loose. And then you can really have fun building up your little bits and pieces here with um, your scraps. So I'm gonna use some more of this. I really like this kind of torn edge here. Maybe tidy it up a little bit. 
just have fun. That's too hard to get a hold of. Maybe add some fabric to this one. Sew that all through. All right, let's do something like that. So I'm gonna tear this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna tear it here. Kind of give myself a gauge of how, and I want that kind of rough edge all the way around, so I'm gonna tear it on this side as well. This is, like I said, a pretty old book. I was looking in the music section because I'm working on my Ludwig van Beethoven book. And I, this is Bach. This music book is Bach. I couldn't find Ludwig. But they're both German composers and kind of, not that I can read sheet music anyways, but I thought it's kind of fun to incorporate some, some actual you know, romantic style music into my journal when I get around to working on that one some more. Okay, so let's darken this. There we go. And do we want fabric? Kind of like the texture of the fabric. playing with different textiles and having fun with it. Yep, I'm gonna put this out the side here. Let's see. Because I like all these fuzzies. And I'm gonna sew this. So you could glue it, but I've got my machine out handy, so I'm gonna stitch it for fun. And it adds another texture, which I really like. So I'm sorry it is off camera. My desk is so crowded right now that I don't even have room to move it over. But I'll show you where I stitched. And you'll see none of my stitching is straight. <laughs> you know, it would be really nice too if you're an embroiderer or if you have that kind of thread. Um, oh, I ran out of, is my bobbin empty? I might have to glue it. Yeah, it's empty, so I'm not gonna do that now. So we'll glue. We're gonna glue. Sorry about that. It's always the way on video. That's why you need an editing software to edit out all your mistakes. I kinda like to leave them in. Just goes to show that we're all learning. Even people who look like they know what they're doing, um, they make mistakes too. And it's part of the learning curve. So. Kind of like that. And we could do something on the back as well, just again to make it more of a journaling card. It takes two seconds to throw just a clean piece of paper on there so you can write on it. Especially if you're selling these or giving them away, it gives people a really nice little place to write stuff down. And then maybe we'll give it a piece of fabric or something too. Maybe, maybe use this. Let's try this just as a little pull. So yeah, this scrap is getting used up, which is great. And again, I'd probably staple this, but I don't have a staple handy, so I'm gonna glue it. If there's any glue left, there we go. Well, some This glue can bleed through this fabric, so try to smear it out as best I can so that it doesn't leave too much of a mess. And there we go. So we have another little journal card ready for our little pocket. And where do we put our pocket? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> 
All right, so we made our little pog. We did some sketching. We made our little pocket for our birdie tags, which I think are really cute. And they nice little gift tags too. And we're using up scraps. Come on, go in. Why oh, is it not going in? Did I glue it? There we go. Oh, there's a piece of thread in the way. And then another little birdie tag. And we did some sketches today. So this can just get glued into a little journal. So I have a little birdie journal here that I've been working on with uh, some paintings and sketches. And then you just find a page and in it goes. You just glue it right in. I think I'll do it right now so I don't lose it. So this is my little birdie journal that I've been playing with. It's having fun doing sketches on labels. These are all label sketches. And now I have some tags ready to go. Make sure that glue's not oozing out the other side. So more scraps and more little things to pull out. Just having fun and little sketches. So there we go. That's what we made today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll um, come back and visit me again if you if you like it. Uh, the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the like and the notification, and we'll see you here again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.